I have a lot of couples that come in and I tell them this and literally they will look at each other. Hello and welcome. In today's episode of Dr. Nora, I take you through two common sexually transmitted infections which are chlamydia and gonorrhea. As a GP working in the Gold Coast, which let's face it is a predominantly young population, I see an awful lot of people coming in with symptoms or even no symptoms, but just simply coming in with STIs. Now guys, this is more like a public servants announcement for you guys. It is really just an education to let you know what to expect if you have got something and when you should get treated because these infections are largely treatable and they can cause a lot of complications if you leave them untreated. First up, we're going to talk about chlamydia. Chlamydia is one of the most common communicable diseases in Australia. Yes, that's right, you heard it. In fact, in Queensland, which is the state I'm currently in, to date there have been, all through this year, almost 10,000 cases of chlamydia. That is a lot. That is almost over 1,500 cases of people coming in to their GP with chlamydia. Now, that is say those are the people who are coming in to get tested. Now, just imagine that there may be people who are not getting tested and they simply don't know that they have chlamydia. That is fairly shocking. Chlamydia is an STI that commonly affects under the 30 year olds because maybe they're out there, they're having parties, they're having fun. But guys, that is no excuse because these are diseases that can be prevented and they can also be cured as well. So it's really important to make sure we break the chain of cycle. But Dr. Nara, how do I know if I even have chlamydia? Well, you know what? About 85 to 90% of people actually have no symptoms if they are infected with chlamydia. That is pretty shocking. However, those of you who do have symptoms, you may be experiencing, if you're a guy, some discharge, which looks a bit unusual. You may be experiencing some testicular pain. And certainly if you're a girl, you may also be experiencing some discharge down below, which doesn't look quite right, or even some pelvic pain or pain during intercourse, or you may even be getting some irregular bleeding, which could be bleeding in between your periods or even bleeding after intercourse. Now, surely those are signs for you to come in and see a doctor and say, hey doc, you know, something's not quite right. And so hopefully a doctor will go through a really thorough history and they may find out that, you know what, there may have been something there or maybe a, a reason to have an STI screen. But now for those of you out there who think to yourself, well, you know what, she'll be right or she's gonna get better by herself and my symptoms will go away. Well, let's face it guys, these things do not go by themselves and certainly if it is an STI, it does need to get treated because there are some long-term complications that can occur if you have an untreated STI. And for men, this can mean that you get something called epididymoorchitis, which means that you get testicular swelling and pain. And for women, this can be really quite detrimental to your fertility. You may end up with a condition called pelvic inflammatory disease, and you may also end up with fertility problems. So that is why it is super important if you are experiencing any symptoms that you get tested by your doctor and you get treated for this. But Dr. Nora, how do we test for this? Well, this predominantly takes place in two main ways. First up, your doctor may advise you to give them a first urine catch of the morning into a specimen jar. Or secondly, a doctor may offer to do a swab themselves, or they may give you a swab with some instructions of how to do it yourself. And once we've done that, we send off the samples to the lab and generally speaking, results will be coming back to us at around two to three days later. So unfortunately, your test results have come back as being positive. What do you do now? Well, as I said, it is super important to get it treated. This is something that we simply cannot ignore. It will not go away by itself. And similarly, for those of you out there who think, yes, I've had chlamydia before in the past, I'm immune to it. No, 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 sir, you do not. You are not immune to it. If you had chlamydia in the past, there is no immunity for any future infection. So therefore, it is really important that if you do get a text from your old flame that they've said to you, hey, I've got chlamydia, you should get checked out. Maybe you should take heed of that and not say, nope, I'll be all right. So treatment takes place in two main ways, which is essentially just antibiotics. The first up is we can give you a prolonged course of antibiotics, which usually takes the place of having a week's worth of antibiotics. But if you're like some of my patients who just simply do not want to comply with taking a week's worth of antibiotics, then your doctor may offer you just a very short course of antibiotics, which usually takes the place of having two tablets straight away, which will then cure the illness. All right, so what happens from there? That seems pretty straightforward. Well, usually we ask you to have no intercourse for seven days after treatment. Now, you'd be surprised because I have a lot of couples that come in and I tell them this and literally they will look at each other. It is not the end of the world. We ask you simply for seven days, at least for nothing, so that at least we can make sure that you're not passing it back to each other and we're not going backwards and forwards. Once you've had your seven days of abstinence, your doctor may, if you're one of the special populations of people who have got the infection, may ask to do a test of cure, which means another test after about four weeks from treatment, which may include another first pass of urine in the morning or indeed another swab. It is super important, as we said right at the beginning of the video, that you contact Trace. Now, what does this mean? It means that you should contact anybody in the past six months and let them know that you have got this positive infection. 
it's really important because if you're not telling the last person that you slept with that you have chlamydia and then they go off and sleep with somebody else, then essentially what happens is they're going to pass on the disease to other people. And like we said before, if they're unaware that they've got it, then girls can obviously have fertility problems and boys can also have testicular problems as well. So it is your responsibility to make sure that you contact trace back from six months and advise anybody that you may have been with that you've had a positive chlamydia test. It is also really important that for those last six months, if there was anybody that you had intercourse with, that you don't sleep with them until they've been tested themselves and they come up as being negative. Because let's face it, the worst thing you wanna do is get yourself all cleaned up and cured, and then you reinfect yourself again. Not cool. All right, so that's a quick run through of chlamydia. Now let's talk about gonorrhea, which is a sexually transmitted infection, which isn't as popular as chlamydia. However, as a general practitioner, I am seeing this more and more and more frequently, and it is one that is increasing in its prevalence. So to give you an idea of how common it is, in Queensland, in this state alone, we've had almost two and a half thousand cases in the past six months through this year so far. Generally speaking, we tend to see it in patients who may be men sleeping with men, but we also see it in heterosexual couples as well. And so we see uh, the prevalence is also increasing as time goes on. Now, just like chlamydia, you may not experience any symptoms if you do have gonorrhea. If you're a female and you have got vaginal gonorrhea, then you may not have any symptoms. In fact, 80% of women have got no symptoms if they're infected with gonorrhea. But the roles are reversed for men. If you're a man who's got penile gonorrhea, then generally speaking, you will be symptomatic. About 85 to 90% of people do have symptoms. And this can include things like penile discharge, maybe some testicular pain or swelling, uh, some pain when you're passing water as well. And if you're a female and you're in the 20% of people who have got symptoms, then again, symptoms may include things like pain when you're passing water, pain during intercourse, and also vaginal discharge. So again, alarm bells ring if you do have something downstairs that just doesn't feel quite right. Now, obviously, with all of these STIs, it can affect different areas, for example, the anus, the mouth, or the genitalia. So it is super important if you are experiencing any symptoms at all that just seem a little bit off to go and see your medical practitioner. Okay, Dr. Nora, that doesn't sound so pleasant, but what if I don't know I have got it? And what will happen to me if I leave it untreated? Well, just like chlamydia, if you were to leave gonorrhea untreated, it will cause some long-term complications. Now for men, it's gonna cause in small cases a condition called epididymoorchitis, which is what we spoke about earlier, which is swelling and pain in the testicles. It may also cause some prostatitis as well, which is essentially where the prostate becomes enlarged and painful. For females, it may cause pelvic inflammatory disease, similar to what we learned in chlamydia as well, which can then lead on to fertility issues. So therefore, it is super important that if you do suspect you do have an STI, that you go and get checked out. And just like chlamydia, checking it out is usually very straightforward and simple. Your doctor may ask you for a, again, a first urine of the morning, in a specimen jar, or they may ask you to perform a swab yourself, or they may do a swab themselves. Now, like we said, these STIs can affect any orifice at all. So those swabs may be the mouth, the anus, or the genitalia. So it's super important that you're frank and honest with your doctor to make sure they can give you the best possible treatment. So treatment for this one is a little bit more uncomfortable. For this, generally speaking, if it's an uncomplicated case of gonorrhea, your doctor may advise you to have two forms of treatment. One is an oral antibiotic, which is usually just a one-off antibiotic. And the second one is an intramuscular injection of an antibiotic, which is usually in the booty. Now, I've had a lot of patients that come in who have this, and it's not the most pleasant. We do mix it up with some anesthetic because it does hurt a little bit. But the funniest case I heard, well, funny in the sense of, how funny it can be, was a chap who came in to me and he said, well, doc, you know, I'm really familiar with how to do these injections because, you know, I, I use drugs in that. Is it possible that I can do it myself? And I sort of just turned around and looked at this patient and said, you know what, it's really good if we do it for you because one, you know, legally we have to do it. And secondly, you don't really know where you're going. And thirdly, it's a powder. So there's no way you can inject a powder into your bottom. I don't know what they wanted to inject it with and I just point blank refused and he did come in and had his own injection through us, through <laughs> through our staff. So it's so super important. If you guys feel like, you know, you might be able to do the injection yourself and you're just too lazy to come back to the doctor, wrong. <laughs> we will do it for you. We'll make it sure that it's in the right place, it's in the right location, it's mixed up accordingly and it is done in sterile conditions as well. That is so important because we don't want to give you any infections or we don't want you to go off and get any infections if you are injecting for yourself. Okay, Dr. Norris, so you have an injection and maybe some oral antibiotics. What comes next? Well, just like chlamydia, there are some aftercare instructions. Again, we advise you to have no intercourse for seven days, and we will advise you to come in for a test of cure after two weeks post-treatment. This is to make sure that we have treated you effectively 
and that the medication has worked and you no longer have gonorrhea. It is really important that you do contact trace for a minimum of two months in the past. Again, this means contacting somebody that you know you've got this and they should get tested themselves. Again, helping to reduce the spread of these infections because let's face it, it might just come round to you again. And if it does come round to you again, just like chlamydia, you do not have immunity. So each time you do have an infection, you must get treated. Whew, okay, that was pretty full on. But guys, it is super important that if you think you may be at risk of having an STI, that you get yourself checked. Now you're probably thinking, well, how do I know if I'm at risk of having an STI? Well, this could be if you receive one of those text messages from an ex-flame that told you, hey, get yourself checked, you should go and get yourself checked. If you've had uh, intercourse that's unprotected with any different sexual partners, then definitely you should get yourself checked. If you've had a history where you're traveling around abroad and you know, you've been having fun and living life, you should get yourself checked. And similarly as well, if your doctor suspects that there's something just not quite right there with that discharge that you're experiencing, please follow their guidance and get yourself checked. It's also really important that if you're entering a new relationship to consider having an STI check as well. Now, generally speaking with these sorts of uh, infections, there is an incubation time of two weeks at the minimum. So that means that if we test you too early, we may not be able to detect anything. So we usually ask you to come back after two weeks and have a checkup to make sure that you are fully negative. That way you can feel rest assured that you and your partner are completely safe to carry on. But guys, failing all of that, the most important way or method to prevent these infections from happening other than getting regular testing is to practice safe intercourse, which means using barrier contraception, especially if you're having uh, intercourse with a casual partner. So there you have it, guys. That is a rundown of chlamydia and gonorrhea, two of the most common STIs that I'm seeing as a general practitioner over here on the Gold Coast in sunny Queensland and letting you know what the symptoms may be, how we detect it, and finally, how we treat it. I hope you guys have found that video useful. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy.